uh, TouchForce has now just moved from a technology company to a holding company. Um, and we are actually uh, working pretty strongly in, as always in the technology space. However, we've moved now from just bringing AI technology to AI operations technologies, which means we bring in the factor of self-healing into the ecosystem of enterprise companies. Now, gone is a time when you would dedicate staff to solve problems identified by AI bots, but now it's something called self-healing coming in as well. And we've been very aggressive in terms of growing into that particular space. Now, once you understand that there's a lot of AI into the ecosystem, you're trying to understand how do you mine the data lakes in different ecosystems. So that gave us an opportunity to um, shake hands with an existing company in Spain called uh, Aztec Technologies. And we have a, jo a joint venture between TouchForce and Aztec. So we got a company here in the Middle East, uh, in Dubai as a mainland company called X-Space Max Technologies focusing um, purely on satellite technologies. So when I, let me just talk about one big use case which actually makes sense to the entire ecosystem. So the report from ITU in Africa talks about $100 billion is the CAPEX investment to actually connect every individual to the internet by 2030. Right, now this is, which means for every radius of 10 kilometers, is what a person has to travel to get connected in Africa. Now when you look at this 100 billion, yeah absolutely, when you look at this kind of an ecosystem in Africa, not just in Africa but in other countries as well, but I'm focusing more on Africa. Now when we bring in uh, satellites which are able to beam data in order to not just give you the video experience but the actual rich experience of you to browse, get connected to your education, healthcare and the basic requirement, that's where the damage is going to happen. So it's a business for everybody. Now considering this as our ecosystem, we've got four satellites already in space, orbit, in orbit, in lower, lower orbit. We got license to do 153. And now we are bringing in IoT enabled satellites, which is actually going to take over, or in fact, as an add-on into the telecommunication space. So another use case here comes in maritime. So we are aggressively into maritime. So what happens here is we're trying to bring in uh, geolocation to precision using our satellite beam data. Same thing happens with our aviation industry. The biggest problem right now in Africa, you've got approximately 40 plus countries and all these countries have different taxation systems. So if a flight is going from UAE to other crossing over Africa, it passes over multiple territories and each one of them are in separate taxation policies. What our technology does, in addition to give them beamed images or satellite images, is automatically using AI to actually build the end customers, which means the aviation industry has got zero capex involved, but we are going to operate the entire ecosystem on OPEX. Now that's a big wow factor for the aviation industry as well. The, the biggest fear factor for everybody is they will fail big. Right, uh, it requires a lot of uh, capex investment, but you have to get into a satellite ecosystem as well. But uh, is it scary? Yes. Um, are we are, are we going to be uh, close to failing? Absolutely, yes. But are we now fearful of that? No. We want to be in a space which is getting us outside the comfort zone. Now look at look at the thought process. Somebody needs to actually add the smaller elements in an ecosystem to get the bigger picture. Right. Now, if you, took, if you look at our competitors who've been there in the European space and you look at the competitors here in the UAE and the Middle East, there are hardly a handful of them getting into the space currently. Now, when we move from data uh, telecommunications depending on satellite technology, it becomes faster. Now, if you look at UAE, look at the flying cars. You need to beam data consistently at a great amount of speed. Now, will the existing infrastructure on ground will enable everything? Absolutely not. So I'm looking about five, 10 years ahead in time when we have air taxis flying. We want the government to be depending on parallel sources of data continuity, and that's where we think we're going to build this ecosystem. So uh, if, I, if I actually look at Jitex, is like the pyramids. This is where action happens, right? Now, it's important that organizations like CPI Media and yourself 
take this opportunity to elevate and levitate technology, technologists like us in order for the ecosystem to understand how are we disrupting and how are we focusing on customer experience. Eventually, whatever we are doing, be it TouchForce, XSpace, Max Technologies, bringing in satellite data, the end result is we want to have consumers going through a seamless process of experience. And I think Jitex has always and will always play a major role for companies like us in order to promote us, not just locally, but globally. So I just want to say thank you for that. Uh, one of the major factors here is to, for us to understand as entrepreneurs is we jump into something which excites us, right? And be it the Bitcoins, be it the uh, stable coins, now we're getting into stable coins and now the metaverse. Now the, the fact of the matter is somebody lays the platform and then technology companies like us come and add flavor to it in bits and pieces. And over a period of time, we, we, got to, we got to bounce off other technologies in order to make this even more realistic. And I think over a couple of years, right now we're starting to have meetings, everybody's building metaverse and we have metaverse uh, ecosystem as well. The, 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 can I actually use this technology beyond this space? Can I connect globally at this point? No, because there's another part of the world which is not yet in that ecosystem. Absolutely. So I think, I, I think there's a growth phase in both these uh, technologies and over a period of time, when the ecosystem balances off at different geographical locations, that's when the true power of Metaverse is going to come in. Just like how I can talk to anybody with Zoom or Teams. Initially, that was not, we didn't have the infrastructure. That's where I think Metaverse is right now.